Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started now. Um, I'm a little bit surprised that there's not that many people here right now. Did midterms kill everyone or? Yeah, sort of. Sort of. Oh, that's okay. Um, everyone who didn't come, they can always get this from uh, the video that I'm going to put the blackboard later. Uh, anyways, uh, week eight vectors. Um, how do we feel about uh, the sections? Is there any part that uh, was confusing that we can look at right now? Okay, so uh, is it safe to assume that everyone did fine on these sections? So uh, we can go straight to the labs. Oh, can I have a question or ask a question? Sure. Um, for next Thursday, uh, so that we have fresh time, can we work a bit on the homework? Oh, and then uh, Professor Amir sign a new homework? Yeah. Yeah, uh, we can totally do that. We can do anything you guys want. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> uh, before this uh, session ends, why don't you uh, send me a link to... Uh, the homework so that uh, I know, so that I know what I'm dealing with uh, when Thursday comes around. Thanks. Okay, so uh, we'll go ahead and do a, a, the labs now. Um, so uh, I looked at each one of these labs, all of them look almost exactly the same, uh, but uh, I picked three of them that I, I kind of liked. Um, and that's uh, 8.14 output numbers in reverse, 8.16 output values below an amount, and 8.17 adjusting list by normal And thank you for that link. I'll put that to the side over here. Hmm. Actually, let me try that again. Oh. Apparently the link doesn't work. No, it's okay. Uh, <clears throat> just uh, one of you guys email, uh, maybe take a, a PDF or a screenshot and then email it to me after this session's over. That'll work too. Okay, so let's start with 8.14. Now, the reason I like, uh, vectors is because you can do, because uh, it's not an array, it's a list of items that you can adjust the size. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with vectors, right? And one of those things is um, uh, this, you can output numbers in reverse. So 8.14 says, uh, write a program that reads a list of integers and then outputs those integers in reverse, okay? Uh, the input begins with an integer indicating the number of integers that follow. Uh, for coding simplicity, follow each output integer by a comma, including the last one. Okay, so if the input is uh, this, the first number, five, indicates how many integers follow next. So there's exactly one, two, three, four, five integers uh, that follow this integer. And then after we push after we push back all of these uh, items into the vector, uh, we're gonna output it in reverse. Now we already know how to um, read numbers in reverse. We basically have to just write a for loop that, that reads backwards, right? So uh, this seems easy enough. So uh, over here, so, uh, it was kind enough to already include uh, the vector library and uh, create the vector of ints for you. So, um, so if our input reads like this, what's the first thing we should do? Well, the first thing we should do is uh, get this value into its own uh, 
integer, right? And see that, and see in that. So, uh, what what do you, what do we want to name the first uh, integer? Uh, this first integer is the number of values that follow. So, what what do you guys want to name it? Maybe int total values or something like that. Like that. So we'll read this in as total values because that's how many there are, right? And uh, after we get this information, <clears throat> a good idea, let's write a for loop that iterates total values number of times, okay? So we already know how to <clears throat> make a for loop. So we're gonna say for, as always, we'll say int i equals one, or zero. Um, now, how many times are we iterating this for loop? We're going to iterate it total values number of times, right? And actually, before doing anything else, actually, I should see in that. See in total. So that reads it in. OK, so now this for loop will iterate um, I is less than total values number of times, right? And then each time we iterate, we'll increment. Okay. That. Okay, so, um, so for this many times, we're going to have to insert the next item into uh, the vector, right? So it seems to me that we're gonna <clears throat> also make a, a placeholder variable of type ints, and then we're gonna use that to put in, into, the vec into our vector user ints, right? So this placeholder variable is also going to be an int. What do you guys want to call it? Maybe just temp. Yeah, temp. OK. So, <clears throat> for, so, <clears throat> so for each time we iterate, we'll say uh, c in temp. And then after we retrieve the value of 10, we're going to need to insert uh, whatever value temp is into user ints. Now, uh, who here knows the, uh, the vector function that allows us to put that into the vector? Does anybody remember what it's called? You guys did the sections. You should know what it's called. Well, in case you don't remember, uh, let me remind you, it's called pushback. OK. And uh, so we say the, the name of the vector dots and then the function. It's called pushback. And inside of the open closed parentheses, uh, we need to say the item in which we're trying to push to it, right? In this case, the value we're pushing is going to be called 10. I think uh, I showed you this little uh, table before. I, I suppose it doesn't hurt to show it again. Um, So this was actually 
the PowerPoint I made for the last class I I taught. So um, here are all of the uh, some, but not all of the functions that apply the vectors. And the pushback function is the one that allows us to insert an element at the end of the list, right? So, so after the first, so before doing anything, um, the user int vector contains zero items because we didn't push anything to it yet. But after the first iteration of this for loop, um, user ints will have one item in the list and it'll be the value of two. And then after the second iteration, we'll push back four, then six, then eight, then 10, right? Okay, so uh, after this for loop iterates, it would have inputted this and then it would have inputted five of these. So that completes uh, our reading the data. So at this point in time, all of these values would have been stored into our user int vector. Now, um, the very last thing we gotta do is uh, output these numbers in reverse, but we have to put uh, commas in between. Now, you guys all have already seen uh, us write a for loop in reverse, right? Does anybody remember how to do it? No? <laughs> it's, it's fine if you guys don't want to use. So, um, one thing we got to remember is that uh, um, the index, oh, I used i for this for loop. So I guess in this for loop, I'll just use j. Okay. So, so um, for the index, instead of starting at zero, I should start at the index of the last element. What's the index of the last element going to be? We, we, we all should know this. It's going to be uh, the size of the vector n minus 1, right? Because a vector contains, because a vector contains uh, a list of n elements, but uh, the index of the last element is going to be n minus one because, and the reason for that is because the count starts at zero, right? So I'm gonna say user ints dot size, right? So what this should do is retrieve the size of the user ints. But uh, after I retrieve this, I should actually say this value minus one, right? Because it's all the index of the last element is always n minus one. I'll say minus one here. And that should do that. Um, now, if we were doing this for loop uh, forward, um, what we usually do is say i is less than how many times we're iterating. In this case, the number of times we're iterating is user ints dot size. But I'm not doing this in reverse. So I'm going to have to switch this around. What will I replace this less than sign size of it sign with? Uh, yeah. Uh, we have to do it the way that Jose Garcia says in the chat. Instead of saying less than we say then we say greater than or equal to. Right. And then lastly, um, uh, if we were doing this uh, forward, we would say I plus plus, but in the, we're not doing it in reverse. In this case, we're gonna say I have to say I minus minus. Like that.
So we're actually almost done with this lab. Um, the only thing we have to do now is print the the uh, the the element that's at this at the index of j. Oh, you know what? I actually use j for this for loop. I, I don't know why I said i and these. My bad. This this should be j, and this should be j. My bad. I, I'm so used to saying I. Yeah, Jose Garcia noticed too. All right. So uh, now that I got this, um, all I have to do now is output the vector element at that index j and uh, put a comma afterwards. And that's going to be very easy. So I'm going to say C out. Uh, user ints. Now there's actually two ways that you could. Uh, hmm. Shouldn't the condition in that for the BJ is greater than or equal to zero? Hmm. Yeah, I, I think you might be right. Uh, Logan Ashpaw. So, yeah, you're right. Since I am going backwards, I should say greater than or equal to zero. Thanks. That completely slipped my mind. Thank you. All right. Now, uh, uh, this is good. We're we're talking and then we're figuring this out. So, uh, so now, there's two ways we can access uh, an element at a certain a particular index in the vector. One way is to use the dot at function like that. Another way is to just have the index inside of square brackets. Either way would work. But um, I, I was looking at these sections. Apparently, Zybooks likes it if you use the at function. So I'm just going to do what uh, they want us to do. So I'm going to say at our index is j. And then we have to separate all of these with commas, right? Because uh, that's what it wants. So after I say this, I'm going to say comma. And I think I'm done. What do you guys think? Oh, there's only one way to figure out if this will work. So I'm going to submit this and let's see it, what errors, if any, gets uh, thrown at us. Oh, yeah, you're right. We, we do need an end out. My bad. I, I keep forgetting the little things. So I'll say C out and um, thank you guys. I don't know what I'd do without you. So let's submit this and let's see. Yeah, it works. So uh, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. We tell it how many values it's gonna read. It reads exactly that many values and then it outputs it in reverse. So we understand how this uh, lab lab works. Go ahead then and uh, screenshot this or do whatever you need to do in order to get this code. If we're good, we can move on. Are we good? Right, perfect. So let me go back. Uh, the second lab that I decided to hide from you is uh, output values below an amount. So 8.16 output values below an amount. It says write a program that first gets a list of integers from inputs. So this is uh, almost exactly like the previous lab we did, where the first uh, 
the first number we read is how many, the, the number of values that we're going to read afterwards, like this many. Right. And uh, then get the last value from input, which indicates a threshold. Okay, so we read five. Uh, this is going to be our uh, total values integer. These are going to be the members of the vector. And then lastly, the last value we read is going to be our threshold, right? And then lastly, output all integers less than or equal to the last threshold value. So if we read this and we read these, we want to output every vector item that's less than or equal to 100. And in that case, we're going to output 50, 60, and 75. We wouldn't output these because they're greater than 100, right? Uh, this is why I was saying before that almost all of these labs are similar. Uh, but that's a good thing, right? Like it's, it means it's less work for us, right? So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get started here. So it seems to me like the very first thing we're, we're going to do is retrieve the first value of this. And we called the this first C in value uh, total values before. Let's just call it total values again, just to be consistent. So I'll say int total values like that. And then we're going to see in the first value as total values. So I'm going to say C in total value, like that. Okay. So now we're going to make a for loop that iterates that uh, many number of times, uh, reading in each item and then pushing that back to the vector. Okay. Uh, so we're going to make, we're going to need to make a, two more variables here. One is going to be a vector of ints. What do you guys want to call this vector? We have to give it a name. Maybe just something simple we can memorize. Maybe just user ints or user input. And then we're going to make a a temp variable that stores uh, the item that we're going to push back. Now, in the last program, we called it temp. So I guess in this program, we'll call it temp here too. Okay. okay so now we're going to need a for loop that inter and that iterates this many number of times, right? And we all know how to make a for loop. So I'll say for. And, and i equals zero, i is less than total values. And then i plus plus, okay? So now we're going to see in our temp. And then every time we get that, we're going to push it back to the vector. So I'm going to say C in temp. And I'm going to say uh, the name of my vector dot pushback. Uh, my temp variable. Okay, so after I get that, they'll, it'll read uh, five values because that's that's how much the total values is. But we have one more input afterwards and that's uh, our threshold, right? 
So we're going to make another int a variable called threshold, OK? Int threshold. And then we're going to see, see in that. OK? So it's in, in So uh, the last part of this lab is really, really easy. We just need to make a for loop that iterates through the size of the vector. And if the item at that index is greater than or equal to threshold, we'll see out it with a comma. So I'm going to make a new for loop for, I used i before, so I guess I'll use j, int j equals 0, j, yeah. Uh, Artur Perez says semicolon at int threshold. Thanks for catching that. <laughs> All right, and then J is less than total value. And then J plus plus. Okay. So inside of this for loop, we're gonna have an if statement, right? So we're gonna say if, uh, if total values dot at j is greater than equal to threshold, right? If if user user input dot at j is yeah, less than or equal to less than or equal to Threshold. So if this evaluates to be true, we're going to see out it. We're going to see out uh, user input that at. Uh, with a comma between, right? Okay, no. Nope. Uh, Jose Garcia asked a question in the chat. He said, is it not less than? I thought the threshold could not be outputted. Output all integers less than or equal to the threshold. So yeah, it should be less than or equal to, not uh, less than. So yeah. Okay. Okay, so after we uh, finish this, the last thing we're gonna do is end the line, right? So I'm gonna make one more line that says C out and line. And that should be it. So let's try submitting this to see if it works, okay? And it works. So if our if our user int was five, we'll read five values and output each one that's less than 100. So 50, 60, 75. Same with here. Uh, the only values here is that, that's less than 70 is 50 and 60. And as for this, the only values here that's less than 30 is. 25, 27, yeah. So does anyone have any questions about this before we move on?
Birmingham. Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, move on. So there's only one lab left. And once again, just like the other two, um, it's, it's almost exactly the same, right? So um, uh, lab 8.17 says adjust list by normalizing. Like this is almost exactly the same, except we're, we're doing, each time we're doing something a little bit different with the, with the way we're handling this uh, vector of data, right? So this one says, um, when analyzing data sets, such as data for human weights or for human weight, human heights or human weights, a common step is to adjust the data. This adjustment can be done by normalizing the values between zero and one or throwing away outliers. So for this program, adjust the values by dividing all values by the largest value, okay? Um, the input begins with an integer indicating the number of floating point values that follow. So uh, it also says, I'll put each floating point value with two digits after the decimal point, which can be achieved by executing uh, this once before all other C out statements. Okay, so let's take a look at the, uh, the example input. So uh, it says that uh, this is going to be our int total values again, right? And we're going to read one, two, three, four, five values, right? Now, after we retrieve these five values, what we need to do is find the highest value integer in that vector and divide every number by the highest integer. In this case, the highest integer out of all, why am I calling these integers? They're doubles. The highest double out of all of these is 100. So we're going to divide each one of these by 100. So 30 divided by 100 is 0.3. Uh, 50 divided by 100 is 0.5. 10 divided by 100 is uh, 0.10. 100 divided by itself is 1. 65 divided by 100 is 0.65, okay? So, uh, I, the way I see it, as we're reading these uh, values to the vector, um, we're gonna have another int variable called int max or int maximum that's gonna update every time we see a new input that's greater than our current maximum, right? So that should be uh, very easy. So uh, first of all, well, I guess the very first thing we'll do is uh, copy this line just so that all of our outputs are set precision to. I guess I'll put that here. So um, once again, the very first uh, value I'm gonna read is my int total values. In this example, it's five. So I will say int total value. And then we're gonna see in in total value, right? C in total values. And this value is how many times we're gonna iterate our for loop, right? So I will say for int i equals zero, i is less than total values. I plus plus. So uh, we're gonna make we're gonna have to declare uh, some more variables here. 
the next one we're going to declare is the the vector that contains our user inputs. So I'm going to make a vector here. It was nice enough to already include the vector library, right? Uh, I'm going to say vector int. And each time we always call this vector uh, user input. So I'll just call it user input again. Okay. And um, I actually need one more int value. Uh, this int value is going to be the maximum. So I'm going to say int maximum. Right. So, uh, so uh, each time we iterate, we're gonna take we're gonna take uh, we're at, we actually have to declare another variable. It's gonna be called int temp because that's what we've we've been doing, right? So every time we iterate, we need to see in what our temp value is. Temp's gonna cover all of these. So we'll say C in. And then we're going to say the name of our vector, which is user input, dot pushback temp. Like that. So this will get us every item in our I, I item in here and then push it back into our vectors, right? Okay. So now that we have our data loaded into our vector, the very next thing we have to do is uh, scan through the vector. Uh, looking for the highest uh, value in that vector, right? So here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to say, st uh, starting with the first value, because at this point in time, maximum doesn't equal anything, right? So here's what I, here's what I, here's the way that I think we're going to do this. We're going to say maximum equals the very first index of user input. And then after that, we'll write a for loop that iterates through, through the entire vector except for the first item because we already looked at it. And then if uh, total, if user input dot at our index is greater than our maximum will update maximum. Does that sound good with everyone? So, uh, very first thing, we'll say that maximum equals um, total value, total values dot at the first index, which is zero. Total dot at. First index is zero. And in case you guys are looking at this code later and wondering what this is, I'll put a comment here. Uh, I'll say get the first value and that's it to maximum. And now we're going to have our for loop that iterates through everything except the first element because we already looked at it, right? So I'm going to say for, I used I before. Uh, I could use I again, but I'll just use J just because int J equals, now I'm not going to set it to zero, zero here. 
I'm sending it to one because we don't need to read the first value anymore, right? So by reading, uh, so starting that index at one, we're, we, we set, we're saying we're skipping the first element and just starting to look at the second element and, and then so on. So int j equals one, j is less than total values. Uh, J plus plus. Now inside of this for loop, we're gonna have an if statement, checking to see if the the value at the index we're looking at is greater than maximum. If it is, we'll update maximum, right? So if um. If user input dot at j right, is greater than maximum we'll say maximum equals user input dot at j. So after this for loop iterates, we'll finally know uh, what the greatest value in the vector is, right? Okay, so now the very last thing we got to do is see out the entire vector, but dividing it by our maximum, right? So it seems to me that we're going to make uh, another for loop, right? That iterates through total values. So I'm going to say four. I used J before, so I guess I'll use K this time. Int K equals zero. I'm starting at zero because I, I have to look at the whole thing now. So k is less than total values. So k plus plus. Right. And then we're going to see out the value at that index k divided by the maximum, right? Now, did, it's, did the lab say to put commas between? No, it didn't say to put commas between. Okay. So I guess we're going to say um, see out uh, user input dot at, in this case, our index is k, divided by maximum, right? I guess I do have to put a space between. So let me fix that real fast. Um, and then I guess the last thing we have to do is end the line, right? Yeah. That looks like it to me. So how many of you guys think this will work? You guys think it doesn't work? Okay. Let's run it and find out. But I think it'll work. Hmm. Okay. We got some errors here. So line 26, ma maximum equals total values. Request for. 
error request for member dot adds and total values, which is non class. Line 26. Hmm. Oh, instead of saying total values, I should say user input because that was my vector. I accidentally switched those up. And then, um, what was the other error? Error and J was not declared in the scope. Line 28. I said in J equals one, so it is declared. Let me, let me, let's run this. Let's try this again. Let's see. No. <laughs> Expected 26. Oh, let me call him. That could be it. Let's try it again. Well, it's doing something, but it's not quite that. Um, hmm. I wonder where we went wrong here. Let me put this. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy this code and then put it into this video, and then we'll see what's wrong. Yeah, let's figure, let's quickly figure this out. I figured she would have come out and laid down there. My guess is she's still in the back room waiting. No. Let me put it. Like for dinner, she's like, unless a husband's laying in her bed, which could happen, but most likely not. Um. Um, I think I see what I did wrong. I think actually, no, that's not it. Hmm. Maximum it here is thirty, but my. Hmm. I'm not quite sure what's wrong here. Let me.
Does anybody see what, what might be wrong? Oh, I, I, I know what I did wrong now. You see, the reason why it's outputting zeros is because uh, uh, I had my, um, I had my uh, vector, my maximum and my temp all be integers and they should be doubles. So uh, when, uh, when I took 30 and divided it by 100 and I took uh, 50 and divided by 100, it, it should be 0.3 and 0.5, but because I'm using integer division, uh, it's locking off the, the decimal portion and just outputting zeros. That's the reason why. Yeah. Oops. Well, at least you know how to fix it now. So uh, let me let me change this to double. This to double. And this to double. Um, int total value should be the same, but the rest should work now. Let's try this again. There we go. That looks right to me. Okay. So let's go out of here and change. Oh, this to double, this to double, and this to double. And now it should work. Let's try it. There we go. OK, so uh, here is the code you need for this last lab. and. Uh, Go ahead and screenshot it or do whatever it takes to get it. OK. Um, yeah. So that, and did everybody get this already? Good. One sec. Okay. Yeah, I, I can't believe I missed that. I was using integer uh, division instead of double division. That's why they they were outputting zeros. Yeah, that's okay. It's good if I make mistakes because you guys can all learn from it, right? So, so what do you say? You guys did everything? Good, thank you. Okay, perfect. So, I guess I'll stop my share. So, if, unless anybody has like uh, questions or concerns, I'll I'll go ahead and wrap up this meeting now. OK, so uh, be prepared uh, Thursday. We'll look at the homework before we uh, start doing any uh, of the week nine sections. All right. uh, have a good night.